Hi, you guys. Ambrosia here, and today I want to show you how I create my 3D computer modeling. And specifically today, I'm going to show you how I set diamonds in this custom engagement ring. So you can see here in this 3D computer model that I have, um, it's a special program to actually create jewelry. I've pretty much created most of the ring already to just save time on this video. And so today I'm going to show you how I set diamonds down the side of the ring. And so what I'm going to start off with is creating a line in the center of the band. So then I know the diamonds that are going to be set will be perfectly centered. And that's the great thing about having computers to be able to create jewelry is you can get it as precise as you want it to be. And so here I select the line and I'm going to set some diamonds right on here. And I'm going to make them a little bit smaller than what the band is because we don't want the edges of the diamond to stick out. And I'm actually going to be creating kind of like a beaded design on the edges to give it a little bit more vintage flair to it. And so here I'm going to bring the diamonds all the way to uh, about halfway of the ring and then up all the way to the top of the square halo. Now I don't want these diamonds to be too far down the band because otherwise the prongs and the diamonds are going to rub on her outer fingers. And we're going to bring these diamonds down just a smidge so they're not touching the halo. But like I said, we just I'm really particular on making sure the diamonds are about a little bit above halfway of the band because we don't want those diamonds or prongs to rub on your other fingers as you're wearing this ring. Okay, so it looks like that's pretty good here, evenly spaced out. You know what, I'm going to make this diamond just a little bit smaller. Uh, this is the smallest that I go. It's 0.9 millimeters of for a diamond. It's pretty itty bitty, but that way we've got enough room to make that beaded kind of vintage design on the edges of the ring. So now I'm going to add some diamonds on the other side here because more diamonds are always better. And so I'm going to create the same size of diamonds that it starts with um, at the very top here. And so let's adjust the placement of these diamonds all the way up a little bit more. And you know what? This might need to be a little bit. The bottom diamond may need to be a little bit bigger here. Bigger diamonds are always good too. <laughs> that way it just kind of looks a little bit more even through here. So we're just gonna adjust this so the prongs are spaced perfectly. Um, you know, when I create my rings, the prongs are actually made just a smidge bigger than what most oh, mass-produced jewelry are. You know, you're not gonna see a huge difference visually, but it makes a world of a difference when you're actually wearing the jewelry because it's not the prongs aren't going to be worn down as much when they're made just a little bit thicker. So now I'm going to add kind of this beaded little filigree type of design on the edge. Now it looks like this beaded design is really big, but when I actually cast the ring, it's going to be a lot smaller. Cuz you have to remember, we're looking at a ring at a huge scale uh proportion in comparison to what it's actually going to cast as. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the other side. About the same size of the beaded design. I've done lots of vintage style of rings, so this is kind of the same beaded design that I do on all of my rings. So it's still small enough that uh, it's not gonna be big and obnoxious, but it's still big enough that you actually notice this beaded design. So I want them to end perfectly with the bottom prongs. Like I said, I'm a little particular on making sure everything starts and finishes in the same spot. So now let's go on to the other side here. So I want it to hang over a little bit on the edge of the ring and it's gonna be really cl close, uh, kind of butted up to these prongs. So let's go back to the 0.65 millimeters and bring this so it comes all the way to the edge of the last uh, little bead there and then all the way up to the top of the halo. Make sure it goes all the way to the edge there. Um, maybe just a smidge more. There we go. Okay, looks pretty good there. So let's go on to the other side. Same concept, adding some beaded design. Now when you're looking at this, um, like I was saying, the beaded part looks like it's really big. Even the prongs seem like they're 
obnoxiously big um, or like they're sticking out so far that you're going to catch everything on them. Now, keep in mind, I tell all of my clients this, that in the 3D computer models, I have to make the prongs extra long. So then when we cast, we are going to have enough room to pull those diamonds over. So there we go. We've got all of the beta de design completed. Yeah, look how long those prongs are. Don't worry, it won't look like that when it's done. They'll be pulled over the diamond and perfectly smooth. So um, what I'm going to do is actually move these diamonds down into the band. Um, with this beta design, the diamonds are actually set down inward and that way the, the diamonds aren't gonna stick out, the prongs are gonna be perfectly smooth and it just gives you more of that little vintage flair. So what I'm doing here is gonna adjust the prong because this main one, I kinda want it down to a B point, I guess you could say, so it just blends in better with the other side and make that prong, prong just a little bit bigger to give it some more stability on that one little diamond. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually now create a channel so these diamonds can be set down into the band more. So we're going to make this as wide as the diamonds here and make sure that the prongs are going to be fitted into, the prongs will fit into the channel. There we go. Trying to talk and create a ring at the same time. It's a little bit difficult. <laughs> Okay, so now down here, I want to make sure that this channel isn't going too far or too too much further than where the prongs are. I want it to all end at the same spot. Um, I'm a little particular. Make sure that this line is gives you a nice crisp line from where the prongs end, the channels, the little beta design, all of that. Okay, do a little bit more adjusting here. There we go. Okay, now what I want to do, I can. the nice thing is I can see kind of like a ghosted view all the way through the ring. So I want to make sure that this channel isn't going to be so deep into the ring that it's going to jeopardize the integrity of the whole overall ring, like the strength of it. Because I don't want these channels to be um, cut so far into the ring that it's going to make it really thin. So I just want enough of a channel where I can... Here we go, we can see just the tips of the diamonds there. But it's gonna be a little bit of a channel just to drop those diamonds in the ring just a smidge. Um, this isn't like a full channel set where um, the diamonds are would be set even further into the band. Uh, this is just going to, like I said, drop the diamonds in. And so it gives it a perfectly smooth edge. So you don't have prongs sticking up, you don't have the diamonds sticking up. Um, this is pretty much how a beaded design was made for these vintage rings. So I'm going to kind of V-point this down again, just so it gives it a nice look of how this band kind of overlaps the other side here. Let's adjust this just a smidge more. I've created so many rings that I pretty much know exactly what thicknesses and tolerances everything should have. Once again, this is just a little bit cut too far into the band and I don't wanna make it too weak. So let's make this, just see the tip of the diamond. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Now you can see the orange part is where it's going to be cut out to create a channel for all of the diamonds. So the nice thing about working with a computer is whatever I do on one side, I can get it to look perfectly the same on the other side. I know some people are like me. What looks like on the right side needs to look the same on the left side. We can get it so precise. So I'm going to take these diamonds and mirror it over onto the other side. Oh, but we need this little beaded design, of course. So let's mirror this over onto the other side, too. And there we go. Now I've got what it looks like on one side, looks the same onto the other. So I'm gonna choose these channels, and these are the objects that I'm actually going to cut out of the bands. So we're gonna select here and do Boolean, and there we go. Now it the channels are actually cut into the ring. So if I, let's turn off kind of the diamond layer so you can see exactly what I mean here. And let's turn off the prongs. There we go. Now you can actually see how this channel is cut 
into the band. So now the diamonds can kind of drop down in there a little bit more. And once those prongs are pulled over the diamonds, they're going to be the same height as what the overall band is. So it's a very smooth finish overall. Okay, now this is the fun part where the magic really happens because you're not able to really see what this ring is going to look like. It still kind of looks like a crazy green ring, right? Who wants that? So what I'm going to do is actually give you a lifelike picture of the jewelry. So I'm going to select all of the metal. And for this ring, she actually wants it in white gold. And then we're going to choose all the stones, which are all going to be diamonds as well. But you can see here, I can change it from blue sapphires to rubies, emeralds. You know, we can change any parts of the ring to show you exactly what you had in mind. So let's kind of angle it out here and we are going to render a picture. So there's no guessing of, okay, is this ring still going to look what I'm imagining, how I want it to be? This is giving you a lifelike picture of exactly how the ring's going to look. The only thing I tell people is just remember the prongs are not going to stick up this high. They're not going to seem that big. I need them to be long for when I cast so we have enough a length of the prongs to be able to pull over the diamonds. So we can rotate the ring and we can look at it from another angle. But let's say she is curious to see what it looks like in rose gold. So I'm gonna choose all the metal, make it into rose gold, and let's render it again. So you can see from every single angle how this ring is going to look. All that little beaded design just gives this ring a little bit more of a vintage flair. The rose gold just really gives it a unique look. But don't worry, those prongs aren't going to stick out <laughs> hanging off the edge there that you can see. Now let's say, you know, I'm curious to see if it looks like part of it is rose gold, part of it is white gold. I love doing two-tone jewelry because it just gives it a little bit more pop of color, a little bit more dimension. So let's say the bottom part of the ring is going to be white gold and everything else at the top is going to be rose gold. So let's change this to white gold and kind of rotate this a little bit more so you can see kind of under that gallery of the halo. And there you go. You can get a complete custom look. That's the fun part of working with me is that I get the custom design exactly how you've always imagined. So why settle with just any ring that you can find in a jewelry store? We can actually custom. So take a look at more of my gallery online at ambrosia-jewelry.com. Have a great day, guys.